Commission is directly controlled by the Shogun. They're the ones responsible for maintaining law and order in Inazuma, the ones actually enforcing the Vision Hunt Decree. But why would they take action against one of their own? Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Huh? There seems to be some commotion over there. Let's go see what's happening. I'll ask one more time. Do you intend to withhold this month's emergency provisions? The entire clan is counting on that food. We demand an explanation. How many times do I have to say it? I don't know anything about emergency provisions. You dare deceive us? Those provisions are essential. Do you understand? Not some goods to be pocketed by greedy samurai. You samurai think you can just do whatever you please? The Tenryo Commission will hear of this. Oh, uh, huh? And who are you? One of Kurosawa's gang, no doubt. Uh, what? We just happened to be passing by. We heard the commotion and came to see what the matter was. I see. You seem to have come just at the right time. Perhaps you can help us settle this matter. This is Kurosawa. He's a samurai and a member of the Shogun's army. They issue emergency provisions to the area, and he's the one responsible for distribution. In the past, we'd simply ask him for provisions and everything would be delivered. Now, he suddenly refuses to give us anything. He's keeping the provisions for himself, I just know it! We'll starve without them! No one seems to care about us. We used to think Kurosawa was a kind man, but he's shown his true colors. He's the same as all the other samurai. It's no wonder all the visions have been confiscated. The Raiden Shogun doesn't need people like him helping her rule the nation. This must be one of the people Ayaka asked us to help. But why would she ever want us to help someone like him? Maybe we should talk to Kurosawa and see what he has to say. I've never even heard of these emergency provisions. I don't know whether it's rumors or whether they're trying to blackmail me. But either way, it's ridiculous. If I was hoarding supplies, would I still be the poor man I am today? My own family can barely get by as it is. No, if you'll excuse me, I've got other matters to attend to. And that's the first bit of truth I've heard all day. The Shogun's army told me that I was unworthy of my vision. And they said I was slacking off in my work. Apparently, I'd even disappointed the Raiden Shogun. And that's why they confiscated my vision. Well, that's strange. You were helping enforce the Vision Hunt Decree. Why would you be unworthy of your vision? To be perfectly honest, I don't seem to remember the details. All I know is that I would perform certain things every month. But I don't recall what they were. And... It's not just that. I have this unsettling feeling. Like, like, someone owes me something. Does it have to do with the missing emergency provisions? I didn't take any. Like I said, 
If I was taking them for myself, I wouldn't be going through such hard times right now. To top it all off, my house was just raided by treasure hoarders. Which is why I came here in the first place. I was chasing after them when I got held up by these two. If you don't believe me, go find the treasure hoarders yourself. If there were any emergency provisions to be had, they would have found them. Huh. He seems to be telling the truth. But we better confirm. Let's go round up those treasure hoarders and see what they have to say. We should be able to follow their tracks. They couldn't have gone too far. We really outdid ourselves this time. All those samurai houses packed with goods, <laughs> we really hit the jackpot. I mean, besides that one house. You haven't seen anything yet. There'll be a lot more where this came from. Today's just the beginning. I'll be leading you all on an epic journey of pillage and plunder that will go down in hoarder history. You demand, boss. These seem like the treasure hoarders we're after. Let's teach them a lesson! all the mora we worked hard to steal that you know come on boss think of something <clears throat> not bad kid you ever think of joining the treasure hoarders we could use someone like you kurosawa oh i remember so he's the one who sent you after us huh <laughs> just our luck i knew we shouldn't have hit that place so what did you see inside? Was it stuffed with food supplies? Food supplies? <laughs> you kidding? That place was a complete mess. All we found was a strange looking box, hopefully with valuables inside. I didn't want anyone else to see it, so I was planning on opening it myself once we got back. But now that you've caught us, how about we make a deal? That little box for our freedom. What do you say? Now show us what's in the box. Huh? What the? Th there's nothing in here but IOUs. Yeah, a lot of them too. And they all seem to be made out to the owner of a general goods store, a Miss Aoi. We're talking tons of Mora here. We better talk to this Miss Aoi and get to the bottom of this. As for you guys, you're free to go. Just pray that our paths don't cross again! Y yes of course. So, we redeemed ourselves for some IOUs. Uh, does that mean we broke even? Shut it. Let's just get out of here. Time to lose. Welcome to Tsukumomono Groceries. We've got everything you need. Can I help you find something? Or perhaps, there's something you want to inquire about? Ah, so you're friends of Kurosawa, I take it? <laughs> perhaps you're here to pay off his debts. Whoa, whoa! Let's not get ahead of ourselves! We're just here to learn where they all came from. 
How did Kurosawa end up owing you so much money? Did he buy anything super expensive here? Let me think. Kurosawa would come regularly to purchase large quantities of foodstuffs. He'd always put the payment on his own account. However, the price of provisions began to skyrocket recently, and his salary was no longer enough to cover the cost. So, he started writing out IOUs to cover whatever he couldn't afford of the usual amount. So that's how he was getting those emergency provisions. But why did he have to purchase a usual amount? If the price is increased, couldn't he just buy less? Well, if you think about it, the citizens receiving the emergency provisions must have been carefully calculating how much they needed to sustain them each time. Kurosawa thought that it would be quite the disappointment for them if they found they didn't have enough, especially after such long and careful planning. So he deemed it necessary to take on the debt rather than let the people down. Wow. Kurosawa was purchasing all the emergency provisions at his own expense. And no one ever appreciated what he did. They just complained and held him accountable. People's attitudes will always reflect their circumstances. In the face of hardship, nobody cares to think twice. Uh, if you ask me, had Kurosawa told everyone the truth about the supplies from the start, then there wouldn't be such a severe backlash now. Of course, I'm sure there would still have been some unrest. What he was doing was truly a thankless deed. As for why he chose to spend his own money on emergency provisions and never tell anyone, I'm still not too clear myself. If you're still curious, why don't you go as- I see. That reminds me, it seems that his vision was recently confiscated. Most unfortunate. If he doesn't clear the debt on his name, he'll have no choice but to sell that sword that is so dear to him. Sword? What sword? Oh, didn't he tell you? He possesses a very valuable blade. He's carried it for years now. I've asked him about its origins. He told me that it was a gift from his father, that it was too precious to sell. In hindsight, I regret that I never made an offer on it. Everything has its price, at least that's what I think. Why don't you ask him about the sword yourself? Perhaps it'll even provide you with the answers you're looking for. Oh, but before you go, if you would kindly settle today's bill. <laughs> but we didn't buy anything! <laughs> Information is also a kind of commodity, wouldn't you agree? Don't worry, I won't charge much for information about Kurosawa. Nothing we ever discussed was explicitly confidential anyway. Oh, let me think. 2,000 mora should be a fair price. At least we now know where the emergency provisions are coming from. Plus, we found out that Kurosawa has a priceless sword in his possession. Let's go talk to Kurosawa again, and see if he can remember anything. Yeah. I presented them with a choice. Either they left or I drew my sword. They left. It turned out to be a real time saver, actually. Perhaps I should start using it more often. Did you manage to track down the treasure hoarders? Everything I... That just about sums it up. It turns out that you really were distributing emergency provisions. But they were all purchased at your own expense. Strange. Is that really the kind of person I was? I don't really have any such recollection. Even after all you've told me, I still don't remember anything. 
Why was I purchasing emergency provisions for everyone? And why would I put myself in such a difficult situation? <sighs> I really don't understand. But I cannot deny that when I brandished my sword to scare those two away, and this sword was once wielded by my father. I remember once when I was young, I wanted to sneak out with the blade and show it off to the kids next door. My father ended up catching me in the act and scolded me severely. What did he say? <sighs> I can't seem to remember that either. It would seem that I forgot many important things when my vision was taken from me. So many memories gone. Forever. No matter how hard I try to remember. All I can remember now is my father telling me that this blade bore his life's creed. Before he passed away, he placed the sword in my hands and said to me, With this sword, you should... <sighs> If you look carefully, there seems to be some words engraved on the hilt. Can you recognize the words? Virtue and justice? Somehow those two words seem to explain everything now. Taking on seemingly endless debts to make others happy. I guess that must have been my greatest ambition after all. But what use are virtue and justice? I purchased the provisions for those in need. And look how things ended up. The Tenryo Commission seized my vision. And the very people I was so desperately trying to help refused to understand me. And the irony of all of it is, I somehow still felt sorry when threatening them with my blade. I'm incapable of being a good person, yet I'm equally unable to be bad. I... I don't know what to do with myself. Yet another troubled soul. When we get the chance, let's speak to Toma about Kurosawa's debt. The Yashiro Commission would surely help cover his expenses. In any case, we must never let him sell off that sword. Yeah, seems like losing all ambition is a terrible experience. Fortunately for us, you don't have a vision. Let's go find the next poor soul. Taken is supposed to be a famous sword master around these parts. Paimon heard that he's the present day master of Make Your Shisui art. Sounds pretty impressive. This is his dojo. Luckily, there's some people around. Let's go talk to them. Nanako, don't worry. Sensei will be fine. Those thugs that challenged the dojo were strong, but he fought them all off in the end, didn't he? Maybe, but. I'm still worried about him. Things have gotten dangerous before in the past, but it's never shaken him. This time, though... <sighs> it's just because he's been possessed, that's all. Once the exorcism has taken place, he'll be right as rain in no time. Hey there! Did something happen? Who are you? I don't care whether you're trespassers or just here to harass us while Sensei is impaired. Get out of here immediately! Don't make me draw my blade, or you won't live to regret it! No! You got it so wrong! Um, we just came here to... Uh... Disciples? Uh, yep, yep! We've heard all about the mighty master of Mekyosh... But then we got here and overheard you talk... Hmm... From the way you're dressed... Please, accept my apologies. We've had so many people trying to cause... You haven't arrived at the best of times, I'm afraid. Since they got possessed recently, and he's still recovering, he's not able to take on any new disciples for the time being. I see you are earnest in your pursuit. <sighs> okay, how about this? 
My fellow disciple Nanako and I will explain Sensei's situation to you in a little more detail. Then you can decide whether to stay or to leave. Sensei's name is Domon, a name I'm sure you've already heard. Though self-taught, he mastered the art of the sword to a high level. He then proceeded to defeat many other prominent sword masters, never losing a single fight. He once said that his goal was to become the best sword master in the world. And so, even while training us, he continued to hone his own art. His fervor truly inspired us, and we trained hard, determined to keep up with him. But then... Not long ago, Sensei had his vision taken away. He hasn't been the same since. He says the strangest things over and over, and he refuses to let us train. Junya and I have discussed it, and, and we both think that he's been possessed by an evil spirit. So we've asked the Shrine Maidens from the Grand Narukami Shrine to perform an exorcism. But if I'm honest, I still have my doubts over whether he'll completely recover. The Grand Narukami Shrine? What's that? You haven't heard of it? It's the largest shrine on Narukami Island. The Head Shrine Maiden is reputed to have very close ties with the... Not that we'd have any means of involving the Head Shrine Maiden, of course. But even one of the ordinary Shrine Maidens from the Grand Narukami Shrine... So don't worry, Nanako. Sensei is going to be just fine. The exorcism will take place this evening. You're both more than welcome to come and watch if you're interested. So... Losing your vision can cause possession? I uh, guess we should come back this evening and see for ourselves. decided to come. It's a good thing you didn't arrive any earlier. You would have had to witness Sensei in one of his fits of madness. Just now, when Nanako was attending to him, she heard him whispering a few names to himself. When she asked him who the people were, he suddenly looked panic-stricken and pushed her away. It looked like he was in great distress. He was covering his ears and looking frantically around him with bloodshot eyes. All the while he kept calling those names. Some of them we knew, others we didn't recognize. But they all seemed to be the names of sword masters he had defeated in the past. One of them was Anzai. He used to be a fellow disciple of Sensei's, his senior, in fact. But since they defeated him in a duel many years ago, Sensei wouldn't stop calling his name. <sighs> Thankfully, the Shrine Maidens managed to subdue him. The ritual has now begun. All we can do is patiently await the result. Here's hoping Sensei will be back to his normal self very soon. Please, excuse me for a moment while I fetch some water. If he wakes up, he is sure to be thirsty. up with me so quickly are you sure you're Dolmon's disciples you move even quicker than he does unless I guess it's been a few years maybe his skills have improved again um excuse me we're the ones asking the questions here first off who are you and what are you doing sneaking around these parts 
You seem like bad news, mister! Bad news? <laughs> I'll have you know I trained side by side with Domon back in the day. Long before you ever showed up. I don't care to talk about that time anymore. But if you must know, I am Domon's senior. His senior? Wait, that means you must be... Anzai. Yes, that's me. Because I don't wish to see Domon or anyone else associated with him ever again. When we were young, we trained under the same sword master, studying Make Yoshi Sui art together. I had begun training five years before him, and everyone looked up to me as a steady and dependable older disciple. Practitioners of Make Yoshi Sui art seek to achieve stillness of mind, freedom from all agitation. So the majority of disciples are indifferent to rank and reward. I was no exception. But Domon was different. The first thing he did when he joined was go straight to our sensei and ask him, with a beaming smile on his face, how to become the best in the world. Sensei scolded him and told him that the art of the sword should not be used for such vain ends. Sensei said that coveting the title of the best swordmaster, barely days into his training, showed that he had a fickle mind and that this would impede him from ever mastering the blade. I thought so too at the time, but Domon began making swift progress in his training and even started catching up with me. Only then did I realize that it was Domon who had long since freed his mind from all agitation. He was consumed by his singular desire to become the best in the world. He sought nothing less than perfection in the art of the sword, and nothing could deter him from this goal, no matter what stood in his way. Sure sounds like he meant business. So how come you don't want to ever see him again? Because until he arrived, I was convinced that I would succeed our sensei as the master of Mekyo Shisui art. Of all the disciples, I was the most gifted. I had trained the longest. Everyone had high expectations for me. Domon's arrival changed everything. When we sparred, I lost not just the match, but my pride and my status too. I fled the dojo that day and never looked back. Later, I heard that he sparred with Sensei too. Sensei was advanced in years by then, and unfortunately that match used up every last ounce of energy in his body. After that I wanted nothing further to do with him. Deep down, though, I still respected his mastery of the blade and his commitment to the art of the sword. So, when I heard rumors that he had lost his mind, my first reaction was to dismiss them as false. How could he, of all people, have lost his mind? His mind was the sharpest of them all. He had practiced Make Yoshisui art to perfection. I decided to quietly come and see if it were true. Then, to my complete astonishment, I heard him call my name. I thought mine was a name he had long since forgotten. So you see, I came here not to cause him any harm. I just wanted to see for myself. Okay, you've heard my story. You should get back now. The exorcism is probably finishing. Hmm, seems like we got it wrong this time. He wasn't here to mess up the exorcism at all. Still, Paimon's not sure we should bring him back with us. Uh, let's go see how the exorcism's coming along.
that mean he's just lost his mind? But how is that possible? No, no, I refuse to believe it. Something's clearly wrong. Nanako, please, try not to get agitated. I am sorry. With what powers I have, I can find no sign of any malignant spirit having possessed Domon. But spirits may take a myriad of forms in this world, many of which I cannot claim to have witnessed myself. Thus, I dare not rule out possession with complete certainty. And all is certainly not lost, for I received word not long ago that Lady Yai has taken an interest in your sensei's case. L Lady Yai? Is that... The same Lady Yai that I think you mean? The head shrine maiden of the Grand Narukami Shrine? That's wonderful news! Then Sensei will be sure to recover! Correct. Lady Yai is most knowledgeable indeed, and has abundant experience in the exorcism of evil spirits and aversion of great calamities. I am unable to say for certain whether an evil spirit has possessed your Sensei. But Lady Yai can give a conclusive verdict. Excuse me, Miss Inagi, but I must ask, should we prepare a greeting gift for Lady Yai? That won't be necessary. All that is required of you is your timely arrival at the Grand Narukami Shrine. Lady Yai does not like to be kept waiting. I must leave now, but we will meet soon at the shrine. I wish Domon a full and speedy recovery. Who'd have thought Lady Yai herself would have taken notice of our Sensei's case? Do you mean to say that Sensei isn't renowned enough to deserve Lady Yai's attention? No, no! That's not what I meant at all! You misunderstand me! I just mean this is Lady Yai, the head shrine maiden. She has direct and close contact with the almighty Shogun herself. Um. <clears throat> anyway, you should join us too, tomorrow. Given that you've traveled all this way just to meet our sensei, we, the disciples of Mikio Shisui Sweetheart, would do our best to help you. Sure! After all, everyone seems pretty excited about Lady Yai. We're curious to meet her too. Who knows? Maybe we'll be able to find out a thing or two about the Raiden children from her. Where I'm from, if we didn't keep moving, we'd freeze to death. Literally. Do, do you think that's Lady Yai? Oh, no wonder Junyo is so excited. She has a really striking presence. Also, is it just Paimon? Or did she look right at us just now? It was probably nothing. It's not like she's ever seen us before. Keep away. Keep away from me. I gave up the art of the sword. Please, let me go, I beg you. As you can see, Lady Yai, Domon has persisted in this state for some time now. He appears to see those who have lost to him in duels past, gathered all around him to persecute him. Lady Yai, it must be a possession, right? This is nothing like him at all. In the past, no matter what came his way, he would always face it with a, a confident smile. Hmm. I'm sorry. It is clear to me that your sensei is not possessed by any evil spirit. But... then d does that mean he... Hmm, yes. This is a change in the person himself. Unable to cope with the tremendous pressure he was under, he suffered a spiritual collapse. With his wits impaired, he finally descended into... madness. As one who is thrown into the sea, though he fights back desperately against his predicament, it does nothing to prevent his descent into the depths. As for what has triggered this change, I believe it must be the loss of his vision. For to be stripped of one's vision is to be stripped of one's... ambition. 
Stripped of his ambition? But Lady Yai, even without his ambition, why should he suffer such a dramatic change? How does that explain his descent into madness? Your school practices make you Shisui art, does it not? Stillness of mind, freedom from all agitation. <laughs> what a fine notion that would be if any in this world could ever hope to achieve it. There was once one who claimed to be indifferent to rank and reward, and who fled enraged when defeated by his junior. And then there was an aged swordmaster who was aggrieved enough that he crossed blades with the disciple he himself had taught. Then, what of the one who crossed blades with his own sensei and beloved fellow disciple, and defeated them both? <laughs> Can one truly remain unagitated of still mind in moments such as these? Lady, I, I, I'm not sure I understand. Uh, the path of the swordmasters filled with twists and turns. It is no small undertaking to pursue the position of greatest swordmaster in the world. It requires one to take their sword firmly in both hands and cut down the hopes and dreams of others, even those of one's closest companions. Only a deep commitment to his ambition to become the best made it possible for him to rise above the pain of these encounters, to focus on the way ahead. When that ambition disappeared, he began to doubt himself. As he battled his growing anxiety, he slowly descended into the state you see him in now. <laughs> Much like a certain fatally flawed friend of mine. Poor Sensei. To think he's been suffering so greatly. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Father. Sensei. Oh, I'm sorry. That's enough. Huh? Isn't that Onsai? Where did he come from? Did he follow us the whole way here? Onsai? Why are there two of you? Is that you or a ghost? You're here for revenge, aren't you? I knew it would come. I never should have. You're right to assume that my feelings towards you are far from kindly. <sighs> but I didn't come here to settle a score. It's been so long now that I made peace with it years ago. You did nothing wrong that day. I just... I couldn't face the humiliation. That's why I ran. I don't think most of the people you beat along the way would hold it against you. On the contrary, when you cut our ambitions short, we entrusted them to you in the hopes that they might carry you further. Now I know that we can't place our hopes in you any longer, since you've been stripped of your ambitions too. But that is no reason to strip them of theirs. Follow the way of the sword all the way to the highest peak. You taught them that, didn't you? But what if one day, the same thing happens to them? I put everything I had into trying to become the best. But what if it was all a huge mistake right from the start? If there's a chance they'll end up like me one day, I'd rather they stay where they are now than go any further down this path. Have you asked them what they think? Sensei. After you rescued me from the hands of the pirates, I told myself I would follow in your footsteps for the rest of my days. I can't know whether I will suffer in my future as you do now. All I know is that here and now, in the present, I wish to continue. I want to keep going until the day that I can stand before everyone with my head held high and announce that I like my sensei Domon before me, am a master of Meikyo Shisui art. Nanako's far from the only one. Actually, all of us think that way. Goodness. Well, I... You see? You can place the ambition you once had in their hands. Being stripped of your ambition is something that's never happened to me, so I can't claim to understand it. But I do know what it feels like to have your ambitions crushed. That's what happened on the day that you so effortlessly defeated me. So, just as I once placed my ambitions onto you, it is time for you to release yours into their custody. You are not in the same position that I was. When I left, I had nothing to my name. But you have a great number of worthy disciples. 
I... I understand. I'm sorry to have made you worry for me, and for the state of Miyakyoshi, sweetheart. I no longer have the resolve to become the best in the world. The emptiness and suffering inside of me will not abate, so I cannot hope to still my mind and be free of agitation. But as your sensei, I shall commit to imparting unto you everything I have learned in my life so far. This is my promise. And I humbly ask Anzai, my senior, to hold me to my word. You can count on that. I'd be checking in on you occasionally anyway, just to make sure you hadn't lost your mind again. But I am now used to the life of a wanderer. I do not belong in the dojo anymore, so I will simply stop by once in a while to make sure you aren't cutting any corners with them. Well, don't just stand there staring at me. Say thank you to Lady Yai and then get yourself back home. Even though his ambition was taken away, his disciples can take it over on his behalf. Guess that sort of solves this one, huh? Traveler, a moment, please. Lady Yai has some words for you. So, my intuition was correct. The wind that blows from afar carries fresh life to these shores. For us to meet now is premature. Nevertheless, you set foot on these islands at precisely the right moment. Hmm, I have high hopes for you, child. Don't disappoint me. Ooh, Lady Yai seems to have taken a real interest in you. She seems super mysterious. Paimon's so curious what she really meant by all that. Hmm. We can come back to it another time. For now, we should go report back to Miss Kamisato. No time to lose. Oh, Ayaka! Guess who fulfilled all your wishes? Hmm. Huh? Ayaka! Huh? Huh? No. Huh? <sighs> 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 Traveler, Paimon, it is a pleasure to finally meet you both face to face. <laughs> I have heard all about how you helped our three friends. My sincerest thanks to you. <sighs> yeah, short of getting them their visions back, it seems like there's no way to really help them. Um, Ayaka, how come this time you get to come out and meet us in person? <laughs> Because now that you have done the three things I asked of you, I consider you to be my friends. As you will observe, I dispense with the screen for Toma also. Mm-hmm. Wait a second. But isn't Toma your... um... servant? Paimon's happy to help and all, but Paimon sure as heck did not sign up to be a servant! Oh. <laughs> Paimon, you are most entertaining. Toma is first and foremost my friend, and was so before he ever became my attendant. Oh, okay then. Ayaka, you seem pretty different out in the open compared to how you are behind the screen. <laughs> Thank you both kindly. Back to the matter at hand. You have now witnessed the pain of those deprived of their visions. What are your feelings on what you have seen? <sighs> Perhaps in the eyes of a deity such as the Almighty Shogun, the lives of those who inhabit the world are inconsequential. Thunders roar, 
Lightning's flash, the wind's assault, and the rain's descent. All these things take place with no regard for the feelings of the common people. But I believe that surely you understand what they must endure. It seems that perhaps now you can appreciate my feelings on all of this. In which case, perhaps you would be willing to reconsider your stance? You will? Really? Naturally. <laughs> all right, bravo, my lady. You were right all along. See? I told you he wouldn't reject them. I'd place my trust in the right person after all. Now then. Given that the remainder of our discussion pertains to matters of a more... confidential nature, perhaps we can move to the Kamori Tea House? We ought not to involve other members of the Yashiro Commission. Well, here we are again! Please continue without me. I'll keep watch. with this place anyway what makes it your favorite meeting spot this is a land that was gifted to the yashiro commission by the shogun the kamisato clan has the exclusive right to plan build and repair any property on this land and even to allow or deny access such privileges exist due to the yashiro commission's role in managing ceremonial affairs oftentimes it is not appropriate to discuss details in front of bystanders Gets it? Gotta keep a bit of mystery, right? Once the number of ceremonial affairs conducted in the city began to decline, our forebearers built a tea house here. Only members of the Yashiro Commission are permitted to come and go as they please. Makes sense. Perfect place for a secret base. In any case, we can talk freely here. I presume you have a few questions that you wish to ask me? The issue is this. For the vast majority of people, the Vision Hunt Decree is something that has no implications whatsoever. After all, it is but a tiny minority of people who receive visions. Moreover, it is not unknown for visions to spark jealousy in others. Because of this, the attitude of most people towards the Vision Hunt Decree is one of indifference. How can they be like that? <gasps> Paimon's getting mad! Nevertheless, in addition to us, there is also the resistance on Watatsumi Island. Resistance? You mean like an army fighting against the decree? Yes. Many who have lost or fear losing their visions have rallied together under Sangonomiya on Watatsumi Island to form a resistance group. To say a little more about Sangonomiya, historically, there has always been some conflict between them and the shogunate of Narukami Island, Due to the- But I do wonder whether there may be some other agenda behind their resistance movement, beyond merely fighting the Vision Hunt Decree. Of course! We have tried on numerous occasions. Unfortunately, each time a proposal to repeal the Decree arrives at Tenshukaku, it is promptly vetoed by both the Tenryo Commission and the Kanjo Commission, and subsequently scrapped. They invariably adopt a stance of unconditional support for the Shogun's decisions. They have no interest in discussing anything. It almost makes one wonder whether they had a hand in the Shogun's sudden decision to issue the Vision Hunt Decree. The Almighty Shogun. I have seen her on but only a few occasions, most of them formal ceremonies. She inspires awe, commands respect, and exudes a sense of absolute authority. But as I recall, there was something else about her that struck me even more deeply. It was her almost complete lack of any emotion. In that sense, she appeared to me to be less of a ruler and more of, well, an executive official, I suppose. Focused exclusively on her single goal of implementing eternity, acting accordingly without be- Oh? What would you like to know, Paimon? Have you got a plan yet to fight the Vision Hunt Decree? To be honest, we do not. What? Please.
Please, do not forget that challenging the vision hunt decree is tantamount to challenging a deity. Coming to terms with that is already a difficult step to take. So... so what are we gonna do? Well, for the moment, all we can do is try and reduce the harm that is being caused by this decree. For example, by providing vision bearers with safe refuge, or manufacturing counterfeit visions for them as a contingency measure. You're telling Paimon that there are people out there who can make fake visions? Don't underestimate the talents of the craftspeople in Hanamizaka. To the naked eye, their counterfeits are indistinguishable from the genuine article. The problem we are facing right now is that Master Masakatsu, who was providing us with counterfeit visions, has recently been arrested by the Tenryo Commission. Darn! So they found out about it? Ugh. Yes. We knew it was not a long-term solution, and that it was only a matter of time before it would be exposed. But we cannot simply abandon Master Masakatsu. Exactly. I feel the same way. But given mine and Toma's identities as part of the Yashiro Commission, breaking him out of prison would risk dragging down the reputation of the entire Kamisato clan should we be caught. That would only serve to cast suspicion on any future activity we might seek to attempt. <laughs> By no means do we intend to place the burden of such a task on your shoulders alone. When you are ready, go to Hanamizaka, and look for a firework shop run by the Naganohara family. There, you will find someone who can help you. <laughs>